left off on. It's been a while. I'm just going to get started. We're talking about Jesus was in his parables. The several parables we've covered. We're going to talk about the sheep and the goats this morning. How they were separated. When Jesus came, you know, what to do. separate those that are holy and those that are not. Okay, representing the sheep, the goats, those that are ready to go to heaven, and those who are not. He's choosing those. And those that are considered like the goats, they're going to be separated and put in their own place. Verse 33, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You notice in scripture it talks about right and the left. You notice that? The meaning of that, right, typically would be good, positive, you know, that type of concept. And the left would be negative or bad. I'll share with you a, like a story. In the Old Testament, New Testament, there's various stories that you, you'll notice that they talk about the right hand and the left hand. Okay. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them, On his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So here, from the foundation of the world, it means if you go back way to the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth. So from that time on. Verse 35. For I, meaning Jesus, was not hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. In 
in verse 36, it continues, naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came unto me. Verse 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? Verse 38. When saw we thee a stranger? <clears throat> And took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee. Thirty-nine. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? These are all questions. They were perplexed, wondering, when did they do all this? But in verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. Whatever part of that scripture is in reference, you know, naked, they clothed, hungry, they fed, okay, so forth. Ye have done it unto me. As ye have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. If someone's sick, go visit them. Help them. Feed them. Do you know work for them. Help them. If you see someone that doesn't have proper clothing and they're cold in the winter or they're, you know, they're hot in the summertime and all they have is long, hot clothing, you know, go get them what they need for that time. Provide for their, their hungry. Provide when they're thirsty. The little things that you do for someone, it's the same as doing it for the Lord. Verse 41. Then shall he say, <clears throat> excuse me, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed. into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. <clears throat> In other words, the demons, the fallen angels. <clears throat> the fallen angels. The other angels, they're still in heaven. They're the Lord's, they're heavenly. They're holy. And this again representing the goat. They're cast out. And the point of all this is what? So those did not help those in need. They didn't help the sick. They didn't help the naked. They didn't help the hungry. They didn't help the, the uh, thirsty and so forth. <clears throat> so depart from him that's what he said verse 42 and he's answering them and saying for I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink verse 43 I was a stranger and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not. I was sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Verse 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, 
When saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did not to the least of these, ye did it not to me. Verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Okay, so that was the separation of the goats and the sheep, you know, in the parable. So when the Lord asks us to do something, let's not ignore it. So, if you see something, in, if you see someone in need, you see that you could serve in that capacity of, of whatever is going on to help in that circumstance. You know, don't, don't give an excuse to say, I'm too busy, I can't do it, I've got to take care of something else. In reality, you, you really could make the time, you could, you know, do something. Think about your actions. Think about what the Lord is asking of you or expecting of you. Okay? Make the time. Find the time. So moving along. Another parable this morning is the seed growing. We're going to look at Mark chapter 4 to find this parable. There's uh, four scriptures, verses 40, or 26 through 29, beginning at 26. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man shall cast seed into the ground. Verse 27, and should sleep and rise night and day. Hang on a minute. I gotta get my I gotta figure out the thought here. Talking about the seeds. The seeds are asleep. Um and so as it begins to grow. So it should and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up or spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. In verse 28, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, <clears throat> then the ear. to grow here. <clears throat> Alright. Verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. So if you can remember the sickle, it's a harvesting tool. It's a curved shaped knife, basically. And the, the technique they, they use it, it cuts the grain and they gather it in. Okay, so getting back to this slide, what's the point of this whole verse here? Okay, we are preparing, we're growing, we're preparing good fruit, we're being a good Christian, <clears throat> we're doing what we're supposed to do, the Lord is asking of us, 
you know, we're staying in the word, we're sharing the word, we're visiting people, we're inviting people, we're talking to them, we're sharing the word, so forth. We're growing. And there's coming a time when the Lord will gather us. And you remember the other parable? The goat and the sheep? Or the barn and the fire? Okay, so there's different parables that this can apply to. You know, it just depends on what scripture and what book you're in. But basically, it's preparing for the rapture. Preparing for the future. You're doing all you can do as the Lord asks of you to be ready. Next parable, the two debtors. Basically, they owe. We're going to look at Luke chapter 7. Several scriptures here from uh, verses 36 through 50. Beginning in verse 36. <clears throat> And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. So the Pharisee, he wanted Jesus to come and have dinner with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So the Pharisee, he, he invited Jesus. Jesus went into his, his house and he sat down to eat supper. <clears throat> and the tradition of the old, uh, the, the biblical times, when they would eat, they would gather around. These tables was basically low to the ground, and they had like pillows or some sort of um, seating like that, where they were they were down to the ground, and they would lay or just be in some sort of comfortable position. <clears throat> Verse 37, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. So this woman, she was basically a harlot. They all knew her lifestyle. They called her a sinner. They didn't want anything to do with her. Um, she knew that Jesus was in here at the Pharisee's house. She heard everything about Jesus, and she felt the need to go to Jesus. She had an alabaster box. It was full of precious ointment or or perfumed oil and of course these Pharisees you know they're their typical stereotype they were holier than thou and they looked down upon people that weren't of equivalent stature that they were and of course this woman they truly looked down upon her verse 38 continuing in the scripture and stood at his feet behind him weeping. So this is the this is the woman that came with the alabaster box. She found Jesus. She stood behind him and she was weeping and began to weep, wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet. And anointed them with ointment. So to get an understanding of this picture, you can see she was very uh, repentive, if you will. Her heart, she was grieving. She was wanting forgiveness. She came to Jesus because she knew he would give her the forgiveness she needed. She washed his feet with her tears. She was grieving. She was crying, weeping. And she dried his feet with her hair. 
she kissed and anointed his feet. And it moved Jesus. Can you imagine just, wow, the anointing that would be in that place. In verse 49, I'm sorry, excuse me, verse 39. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, meaning he had called Jesus to come to his home, he saw it. He saw the woman. He spake within himself, saying, in other words, he was under his breath, he was making a judgment, like looking upon this, this picture, saying to himself, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of kind of woman that is touching him, for she is a sinner. He should know better not to allow that woman to touch him. But Jesus knew. He knew. He understood. He knew that the Pharisee would not be happy, that he was passing judgment. He was making comments under his breath. Verse 40. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. Tell me. I want to hear. <clears throat> Verse 41. Again, he's giving a parable here. <clears throat> There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Big difference. 550. There's 450 difference. Creditor, he collects money. And so these two here are the ones that they owed the money. They owed the pence. Okay. Verse 42. <clears throat> and when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Now, here's a question Jesus asked the Pharisee. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Which one of the men will love the creditor most? Because he forgave their debt. In verse 43, Simon answered and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. So the meaning of this, or the point, the Pharisee looked upon the woman and judged her. Right? Verse 44, and Jesus is here, He's, he says, and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, seest thou this woman? <clears throat> I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You see, you invited me to your house, but you did nothing to provide for me while I was here, to make me comfortable, to welcome me. 
warmly. Verse 45. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Verse 46, my head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Verse 47, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, Are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven the same loveth little not going to judge her further Showing love, <coughs> sharing love. So you have judgment, great and small. You owe me great, you owe me little. But it's forgiven. The debt is forgiven. Forgiveness was given to the debtors. And this woman she was forgiven as well. Her debt was sin, and Jesus loved her, and he forgave her. She blessed Jesus by anointing his feet with her tears, with the oil, and wiping his, his feet with her hair to cleanse his feet. <clears throat> She's forgiven. Verse 48, he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. <clears throat> They're gone. I love you. You're forgiven. In verse 49, and those that were around, they saw this, and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves. In other words, they were passing judgment and making comments by what they just saw. Scripture says, who is this that forgiveth sins also? So they were talking to themselves amongst each other and they were commenting. They looked at this and they judged this saying like, who is he to forgive this woman? How can he forgive sin? She's a sinner. Verse 50, Jesus continues and he speaks to this woman. And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. She had great faith. She took it upon herself to come where Jesus was. She probably looked for him. She heard where he was going to be. She entered into the house with her alabaster box. She planned this. She went to his feet. She bowed down before him with tears. She anointed his feet with the oil in a box. She broke it open. It was valuable. It took lots of money. She worked hard. She saved for that oil. And she poured it on Jesus. Because he meant more to her than that oil. She had great faith. Great faith. Jesus gave forgiveness for her. I think I need to stop here because my phone's about to run out. I don't want to stop in the middle of teaching. 
So next Sunday we'll be back. I need to work on my phone and, and clean up a bunch of data and so forth. We're going to stop here at the Good Samaritan. Let's end with prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You've given us your word today. You've shown us how that we can do unto you if we do unto others. We sacrifice. We're faithful. We do what we can. Yes, Lord, every day we do something that would be considered sin, but you forgive us. You love us as we try to strive and do what you ask of us. Those that have need out there, we try to reach out to them, just as you reach out to each one of us and provide. Thank you, Lord, for touching us, for causing us to reach out to others, to witness, to help others. We know, Lord, that you look at those, their souls, and you want to draw them in. Lord, help us be strong, to be faithful. Lord, forgive and not judge others, but Lord, we pray that you would guide our steps in Jesus' name. Amen.